What's up guys, who needs Meta here coming at you with another replay from Locals. I've been playing Gravekeepers a lot recently. I really like the deck. I know it struggles without Recruiter and in formats that it doesn't have it, but honestly I feel like the deck has some potential. Uh, I've been having a lot of fun playing it. I played it at a few Locals and ended up going 5-1 between the uh, Locals that I've been playing in. Uh, this is one match that, the only match that I recorded with it. Um, you can see Zach knew I was playing the deck from earlier in the day, so he decided to not attack with the Sroko knowing it was by trying to get me to flip summon it to play into the oppression, which of course he had. Uh, I knew he was playing this deck as well from earlier, so I was going to flip it to play around any type of I Icarus attack shenanigans. And he's going to try and get over it with Bora, and we're going to just kind of book that to save our Gale here because we're going to need to clear the monsters, and we're a little monster deficient. Uh, the deck doesn't play a lot of monsters here. Especially with, without the Necro Valley, now that we have that, we have a big beat stick that we can start using to get in there. He's going to use Shura. Uh, the list that I'm on right now, uh, I was playing Chief in this list. I ended up cutting it for a second upstart. I believe that the three Legacy and is correct. And then I was playing one upstart and I'm just, if I, when I cut it, I was like, okay, I'll move up to two. I don't want to play three. I felt that the difference between nine and ten was significantly bigger than ten and eleven. Um, you see he's going to brain con there, essentially using it as a smashing ground to get me to lose my monster and he's going to be able to put his value in his graveyard. He's going to make Cataster, um, which we're going to be able to just, again, Oppression. We also have Oppression in our hand. We're going to side that card out because I think we're both probably going to side it out. We're also going to use Assailant here to play around the Kalut. He's going to try and go in with another Shura. Again, we're going to try and lose a Kalu, but again, we have so many trap cards and he hasn't really been setting cards. So we know that we're kind of free to do what we need to do with the steal here. Get two guys. And then I was joking that I didn't have a commandant because that would be exact game, but did not draw a commandant. So we're going to put him 100 down, but I don't think there's anything really in his hand. He's drawing, yeah, he's got the double value. Or he's got the value again with the other value, but Blackwing or the Blackwing is not going to be able to do anything with the Necro Valley up with those values, so we're good in that regard. Uh, I really like the three Legacy two upstart to talk more about that. I feel, I feel with Legacy you're able to do some certain certain things in certain plays that allow you because you don't have to extend with spy immediately you don't have to put that spy out on the board especially going second when you're worried about a Raikou, when you're worried about a Caius, you have bluffs that you can use and less impactful cards that you can use to get them to maybe extend into your play if they have a play that they want to make um you can really bait that heavy i'm only playing one starlight road again that card doesn't do anything on its own while legacy does sometimes you do need that road again it's a good in this matchup for cards like ick attack so i'm obviously going to leave that in um i decided to take the ciders out of the sideboard after this day for the other locals i didn't really like the cyber dragons i felt that they didn't provide enough i was doing the whole like swap out the uh, road tributes going second and then there's some matchups i ended up learning i was like okay i need to leave these in for certain matchups who's going to hold their monsters who's not going to hold their monsters and just kind of reading the game and realizing when a royal tribute later in the game could still have an impact and later in the um the next local that i went to i end up royal tributing for three or four cards on like turn like 15 or something ridiculous um so there's also some other cool stuff that you can do with like right and legacy. I'm contemplating going up to three right and taking out the Royal Oppression and moving it to the sideboard. Uh, losing the Necro Valley there to the Icarus attack kind of does suck. But again, we have right in our hand so that we're able to like, okay, if it dies, I could just get my guy back. The, the hard part was again, losing the Necro Valley with it because we really needed uh, Necro Valley to make that card be super impactful. And we, but we unfortunately have to be aggressive when they open Whirlwind Shura. We're like, okay, um, this can get really snowbally really quickly if we don't hold them off, so we might need to, to make some plays we're not comfortable with. So we draw Descendant there. So the play I'm contemplating doing is summoning the Descendant and using the right, but I'm going to do it in a pretty unique way. So this card prevents no threat right now. So he's not going to bottom us, not going to TT. So what we're going to do is we're going to use Legacy and then Chain Right. Unfortunately, it's Book, which is the card we don't want it to be. If it was TT or Bottomless or like Mirror Force or anything, we would have been fine there. Um... We were going to be able to do the play there where we can bring back the Gravekeeper and then use Descendant to trigger it off the Assailant to pop and play around that Kalut. Um, unfortunately, we weren't able to do that there. 
and we lost two out to the Book of Moon here, which is the card we didn't want it to be. But that was the idea behind Chainlink 1 Legacy, Chainlink 2 Right. Again, Right is really cool. It's chainable to heavy in all these cards, and it doesn't need to stick around like Call, so it's not like, oh, I could just grab a Sangin or a Card Trooper. Uh, Sangin is another integral card in the deck, I believe. It's the one of the two non Gravekeepers you saw. Uh, the Gale. The Sangin is the other card because, again, we can force things like Raikou and Icarus attacks and other Exile the Force uh, type effects on it. People trying to pop it, thinking that it is that it is Spy. Uh, Machine of Force is another one because we've used Assailant and put a defense, attack over the fortress, they'll pop the set monster, and boom, you get your you can search your Spy there. And again, you can search your Assailant, you can search your Descendant, It's you can search Gale even, so I feel like the deck... Uh, really benefits from having a card like Sangin. Again, we're not using priority there. If it's TT, doesn't matter. If it's bottomless, we lose our guy anyways. So we don't want to just go one for two there unnecessarily. So when they only have one back row, again, I didn't feel that like priority popping that whirlwind was necessary because of how far ahead he was with the whirlwind. Whirlwind, the it has the, the cost of diminishing returns there like you can see if he's like oh i have no targets left you know they're going to board out at least one value in this matchup because necro valley is going to stop it we're going to book to stop the synchro because we want to be able to pop both cards here uh, we are what we can do is we get to use priority here on this flip summon to play around icarus attack yeah we could uh, we could maybe read oh he would have done it in standby if he really wanted to and not lost our monster for nothing um that's maybe a different play that I could have made. Now, this clue, we know he has another one anyways, so this uh, clue is going to be able to go ahead and get the Blizzard. Uh, this is likely the last Blizzard as well, uh, due to, again, Necro Valley stopping that card. We really, really needed to see Necro Valley here. Unfortunately, this game, we weren't really able to see it as much as we needed to. Again, we're going to end phase right to play around the Kalut. We're going to draw, we're going to draw Spy, Tribute, Pop, Attack for 15, and then go ahead and set the spy he does have so many cards to like play this brio and gain so much advantage off the brio uh, so uh, we're again not drawing these trap cards is really hurting us at the moment because our hand is essentially just all monsters which is another reason why i decided to uh, stop siding the cyber dragons yeah you can't really side them with royal tribute they conflict things like that so uh, and we even draw a Cyber Dragon for turn here. So we have a Stell or Steli or Steel, however you pronounce the card. I honestly have no idea. And so we're going to try and set both to hope that um, maybe he can waste some cards on with his Brio. He's going to Brio bounce and then use the value there because, again, we don't have the Necro Valley to shut that down. And we're going to see 23. And because we don't have a response to the Brio attack, he's just going to clue us for game. Which makes sense. So going first, again, the Royal Tributes are going to come back in. And the Cyber Dragons are going to come back out. And potentially maybe one of the Snowmans or the Gale or something. We want to keep our monster count really low for that Tribute. Because however many monsters that you lose with Tribute, you have your opponent has to lose that plus one to go even, obviously, because you have to pay for the cost of royal tribute if you hit one monster with royal tribute and none on your own hand that's a one for one and again time wizard you don't see the cards this is a time wizard event it's a sanctioned event we're at a locals so we're not going to be able to look at his hand uh with with royal tribute he's not going to look at ours the only added benefit of that is we don't have to set our whole hand we can see what cards we hit and then set the trap cards accordingly based on what you think their plays are so we're just going to go ahead and set two and pass to start He's thinking about shotgunning that MSC and smartly doing it because he knows we play Legacy and you don't want to hit that card. So he's going to set two. We're going to set and then set again. And he's going to use the space smartly in the end phase to hit the D prison. So normal, the Sirocco, and then just go ahead and Nick attack both. That Legacy, again, providing value for for when we need it. Again, over something like Upstart, which we do play. We're, we're all up to two copies now. We hear we're only at one. Um, but that legacy just providing that extra value in, in these matchups. Uh, it, it, there's one we're going to go ahead and space because we're going to start trying to snowball here because we have double Necro Valley in hand. We don't care if the first one gets blown up. We have another one. We're going to be able to play it and get in for 37 and just start rushing and, and start that two-turn clock here. And then set one. You're just going to go ahead and hit it with the heavy. Hit another D prison there. 
That bottom was taking him off the blizzard target, which is really good. We're just gonna go ahead and descend an effect pop and then go ahead for the Necro Valley and go for 2K there. So now we got him really down low in life. We're gonna be able to stell and then set one of the spies. So we have a spy in hand with a spy there. Um, I wanted to do that early. You could say, ah, two spies aren't really adding value. Maybe wait till the Descendant dies. But I wanted to get the spy down while there was no monster on board and while we were trying to get tempo. Because again, this puts them on the clock even faster. You have to have even more responses. And I don't believe he's just going to have anything to be able to, to out this board here. You can see he's just going to kind of show us the book and that the, the Roko can't even clear it with Necro Valley. So he's just going to scoop it up there. There's just not enough, not enough resources to, to out the, out the board. So spy proving, proving value against setting that at just the right time. Um, but yeah, I've been having a lot of fun with this deck. I was really fun. Uh, and a lot of people don't like the stun aspect of it, but I really enjoy stun decks. I think it has a relatively decent ceiling and I'm excited to push it and see what more I can uh, do with it. So thanks for watching guys.